Lisa says, uh, hi Raf, would you be able to give advice on the below for a client who are experiencing a sensation of what they've described as flicking of the tendon behind the knee? It's non-painful and um, this is person is healthy and in her 20s, she's fairly active. She does reformer, mat work, pole three to five days a week. Um, the sensations only happened recently. Could it be too much too quick? She's been learning new moves in her classes. Could it be that she needs to stretch more, let it rest for a few days? This tends to occur when she's walking up the stairs and usually doing exercises like straight leg kickbacks, donkey kicks, etc. Um, I've been thinking maybe it's load, but I'm unsure. I used to experience this feeling as well and it went away with Pilates. Uh, well, Lisa, uh, I had a little look on Google Scholar because uh, I didn't know the answer to that. And uh, I'm not a lot wiser now, but uh, I can tell you what I found, which is that that is a condition called snapping knee. You know, so you can have when your hip clicks, that's called snapping hip. You can have snapping shoulder, snapping neck, whatever. And so snapping knee, it's reasonably rare. So there's not a lot of research into it. Uh, there are a bunch of descriptions of surgical cases um, where the snapping comes from various tendons in the knee. Now, you said behind the knee, so I'm going to interpret that to mean the hamstring tendons. Now, the hamstrings are the muscles at the back of your thigh here, and the hamstring tendons, you can feel them in your own knee very, very easily. They're, they're a like a, a like a steel cable underneath your skin there, directly under your skin. You can feel them very, very easily. Um, and so you have two medial hamstrings on the inside of the knee and one lateral hamstring. Um, well, two lateral hamstrings with a common tendon. So you've got one tendon on the outside and two tendons on, tendons on the inside. And one of the hamstring tendons on the inside also uh, is the tendon for your gracilis, which is an adductor muscle, and also your sartorius, which is one of the hip flexor muscles. So the sartorius, the gracilis, and one of the hamstrings, the semitendinosus, I think, um, all have a common tendon called the pes anserine, which is uh, means goose's foot. Um, and that inserts about here on the inside front of the tibia. And uh, the other medial hamstring inserts a little bit uh, up higher on the into the meniscus and to the tibia, and the the lateral hamstring inserts into the uh, fibula head and the outside of the tibia. And so, what that those tendons, uh, what the noise can be is the tendons, um, you know, flicking over as the joint bends, flicking over. Um, a bursa, which is like a little pad underneath the tendon that might be a bit irritated, or flipping out, flicking over the head of the fibula on the outside, which is this little bone on the outside of your knee. Um, uh, there are also some bones, um, kind of, uh, I forget the correct term, but basically like a sesamoid bone, a bone that is within a muscle, um, that can flick over various things, uh, and not all people have those sesamoid bones. I, I forget the exact name of the sesamoid bone that is in the uh, hamstring or the popliteus back there, um, but there is one in about half of people, I believe, and so that can sometimes flick. Now, so that those are the potential candidates that could be causing the noise. Now... You said this woman, uh, the it only started recently, um, and she's never had it before. So I would say uh, two things that occur to me. The first one seems more likely is that given that she's recently started, you know, increased her activity levels from the sound of things. Um, that sh her, you know, one of her bursae, you know, the little, which is a little um, fluid-filled sac that sits between a tendon and the joint. So where the tendon passes over the joint, there's a little bursa um, to reduce friction. And if she has increased her activity levels, like done too much too soon, um, that bursa could potentially have got a bit irritated, a bit inflamed, which would cause it to get bigger. Okay, inflamed. When things are inflamed, they fill with fluid. Uh, when it's filled with fluid, it gets bigger. And so now it's bigger. So now the tendon flick, 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 flicks over it. So that's probably what I think would be the most likely explanation. 
Um, and if that is the if that is the cause, then exactly what you suggested, Lisa, of let it you know rest, not complete rest, but just reduce activity levels enough so it's not irritated, uh, and then uh, you know do that maintain that lower level act of activity for long enough to let it settle, you know, probably a couple of weeks, okay, and then gradually build the activity back up and just don't build it up as fast next time. Uh, second possibility, which I think is less likely, so I would try that first one first, you know, reduce the light, reduce the training volume a bit, um, and specifically just the training volume of those moves, you know, the moves that aggravate it. Um, and then build it back up. And then the second thing, which I think is less likely but still possible, is that as muscles, like she's increased her activity, so maybe her muscles have grown a bit. You know, your muscles get stronger, that means they, they get a bit wider. And as the muscle grows, well, where its center is changes, right? Because if the muscle goes wider, well, the center, this edge of the muscle is against the bone, right? So the muscle doesn't get wider like that. It gets wider like that. Right? So where the middle of the muscle is, moves. Okay, Now, the middle of the muscle is where the tendon is. So the tendon moves. Right, So like is when a muscle, you know, if you have a bigger muscle, then the midpoint of the muscle, you know, the tendon is coming from a different angle. Right, So, and that might have caused that, but, you know, that seems less plausible to me. Um, and, uh, I, you know, in my head when I'm thinking about that, it seems like, well, that, if anything, that would probably reduce the amount of flicking because it would move the tendon further away from the center of rotation of the joint. So uh, I'm going to go with theory number one, okay, um, which is that uh, maybe there's an irritated bursa or some other, you know, structure. Maybe the tendon itself is a bit irritated um, and uh, that I would reduce the load, not eliminate the load, but reduce the load a bit uh, and then let it settle and then build it back up again. Hope that helps. Let me know how you go.